Here is the review for the chapter one test. The first question, it tells us that ray BD bisects angle ABC. So we know that this ray right there is the angle bisector. So let's work on that. And knowing that that's the angle bisector, I know that angle 1 and angle 2 will be congruent. So using this information, they tell me that angle ABC, ABC, <clears throat> this is the bisector, and they tell me angle ABD, ABD is 52. And they tell me that the measure of angle 2 is 3x plus 1. Since I know that these are equal, I can set them equal to each other. So 3x plus 1 equals the 52. And we go ahead and solve for x, because all they want us to do here is find the value of x. So 3x equals 51. x is going to be 51 over 3, which is 17. So x is 17. Now, on number 2, they tell me that D to F, this whole piece, is 70. And we're also given that D to E is 2X minus 1, and that E to F is 4X plus 3. So I know if I add these two, I get the whole thing. So 2X minus 1 plus 4X plus 3 gives me the whole thing of 70. So this becomes 6x plus 2 equals 70. Okay, so at this point, we're going to subtract the 2 from each side. So 68, 6x equals 68. So that means x is going to be 68 over 6, which reduces down to be 11 and 1 third. So now to find the length of DE, here's DE, 2x minus 1. I'm going to say 2 times 11 and 1 third minus the 1. Working all that out gives me a value of 21 and 2 thirds. Or you could have kept it as a decimal as 21.67. So for number 3 now, um, it says angles 1 and 2 form a linear pair. So let's draw a linear pair. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw it like this, 1 and 2. I don't know which one's bigger, so it doesn't matter at this point. I know that this word linear pair means they add up to be how much? 180. That's why I drew it like that. So now, if angle 1 is 4x plus 1 and angle 2 is 2x plus 8, I can add these two to get 180. So 4x plus 1 plus the 2x plus 8 gives me 180. Let's clean all this up. So 6x plus 9 equals 180. So now go ahead and subtract 9 from each side. So 180 minus the, minus the 9 is going to be 171. And then divide that by the 6, and you end up with 28.5. That's the value of x. But are we solving for x? No, we're solving for the angle, angle 1. So I need to plug that back in. So 4 times the 28.5 plus the 1. Working that out gives me a final answer of 115 degrees. All right, here we go. Moving on to number 4. Let's move all this up. And on number four, it says the measure of angle two is 2x plus 15. So this angle two is 2x plus 15. And the measure of angle four, I'm sorry, is x plus 15. And the measure of angle four is 2x plus 8. So these two are congruent because they're vertical angles. But that's asking me to find the measure of angle one. Since I know 2 and 4 are congruent because they are vertical angles, I can set them equal to each other. So I can say x plus 15 equals the 2x plus 8. So that means x is going to be 
7. Well, since x is 7, I can get angle 2. The measure of angle 2 will be 7 plus 15, which gives me 22. So if this is 22 degrees, what's angle 1 going to be? Well, we know that this is a linear pair, so that's 180. So 180 minus the 22 degrees gives me 158 degrees as the measure of angle 1. Now for number 5. On number 5, they want us to find the distance. You could graph it and use the Pythagorean theorem, draw your lines, or we could just simply use the distance formula, which says the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. And this is x1, y1. This is my x2, y2. And now I just simply substitute these in. So this is going to be 5 minus negative 2 squared plus negative 6 minus negative 1 squared. And let's finish this up here. Cleaning this up, I get the distance equal to the square root of 7 squared plus, this becomes six, negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5, squared. So this becomes the square root of 49 plus 25, which gives me the square root of 74. Now you can leave it like that, or if you want to go ahead and use your calculator, you can approximate this out to be 8.6 units. So moving on to number 6, the midpoint of AB is that value right there. So if you take a look at a segment, this is the value of the midpoint, which is 6, negative 3. And they give me point A over here is at negative 2, negative 9, and I need to find that point B. So I know the midpoint, but I don't know this end point B. So here's what we do. We know that the midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So this midpoint value here is 6, negative 3. So I know that this has to equal 6. I know that this has to equal negative 3. So let's put in what we know, which is point A. So negative 2 plus the other x value over 2 is 6. You can cross multiply here. Negative 2 plus x equals 12. So x is going to be 14. We could do the same thing with the other point. I know that this y, negative 9, plus my second y value over 2 is going to be this value of negative 3 right here. This equation is what I wrote right there. Cross multiply. Negative 9 plus y equals negative 6. Bring this over. Add 9 to each side, you get y equals 3. So the midpoint here is at the midpoint, or the point B, I should say, point B, is at the value 14, 3. Okay, moving on to number 7. Let's slide all this up. So... On number seven now, we are given that the midpoint is what we need to find, and we're told here's the two endpoints. So now it's just straight up midpoint formula of x1 plus x2 over 2, comma y1 plus y2 over 2. And this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. Substitute the values. So negative 3 plus 7 over 2, comma, 
negative 12 plus 18 over 2. This gives me 2. This will be 4 over 2. That's where I got the 2 from. This will be 6 over 2, which is 3. So this is the value of my midpoint. Here we go. For number 8, let's see if you did this one correct. On number 8, it's the same concept as number 6. This is point B, and I need to find where A is, and I'm told that this is the midpoint. So, what we need to do is we need to say 7 plus your second x value over 2 is negative 6, and then negative 8 plus your second y value over 2 equals 2. On this first one, cross multiply, so 7 plus x equals negative 12, subtract the x over, so x equals negative 19. On the second one, cross multiply, negative 8 plus y equals 4, add 8 to each side, so plus 8, y equals 12, so negative 19 comma 12 is where point A is. All right, number nine. On this one, we have a rectangle, and I'm given the vertices. So if you're only given the vertices, I suggest that you first sketch a quick graph, because if it's not a tilted rectangle, you don't need distances or anything. You can just count the spaces. So on this one, let's draw this out. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is point, we'll call this point A. We'll call these A, B, C, and D. Point B is at negative 3 and 1, right there. Point C is at negative 3, negative 5, down here. And point D is at 4, 1, right there. So it makes a nice rectangle. And I don't need any, I don't need to use any distance formula. I can just count it. This has a length of 4 plus a length of 3, so this has a length of 7 in this direction. This has a length of, we went down to negative 5 and up to 1, so that has a length of 6. So this has to be 6, that has to be 7. So I can go through, and I can say the perimeter is 2 times the 7 plus 2 times the 6, or you could have just said 7 plus 7 plus 6 plus 6. So this is 14 plus 12, which gives me 28 units. The area, I would just multiply the sides, so 7 times 6, and that gives me 42 square units. Whoops, let's fix this. This is 26. Let's fix that a little bit right there. It's not letting me erase, so we will just write over it in black. 26 units. Okay. And finally, for this last one, if an angle measures 51 degrees, what is the measure of the complement? Remember, complements add up to be 90. Supplements add up to be 180. So if one angle is 51 degrees, we need to find the other one to get 90. So 90 minus the 51 gives me 39 degrees. And then finally, for this last one, I have 51 degrees. So 180 minus the 51 gives me 129 degrees.